One state wants to deny landlords the ability to reject tenants who have evictions that are more than five years old. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. State Senator Jeff Smith has sponsored Assembly Bill 714, which could bar questioning about or denying housing due to evictions that took place over five years ago. Additionally, property owners, agents, or landlords must inform prospective tenants that they as renters are not obligated to disclose any evictions that occurred over five years ago. When uh, circumstances in their life has uh, put them in a place where they have a record that shows they did not um, pay their rent or they were evicted five years ago or six or seven or eight, ten years ago. That should not be held against them under their current circumstances. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of the state of Wisconsin. Now, I don't talk about Wisconsin a lot because as far as I knew, Wisconsin was actually a pretty landlord-friendly place. I'd actually knew someone who used to invest there and you know they they were getting along just fine okay they weren't having a lot of the issues that were involved but you know things are changing up there and there's state legislation that's being proposed right now that would make it so that landlords wouldn't be able to use one of the best tools they have for tenant screening okay they wouldn't be able to look at evictions that were more than five years old now You know, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, that was a long time ago, these evictions that are five plus years old, right? But, you know, I believe that a landlord should be the ultimate person when it comes to making the decision of whether they want to rent to a tenant or they don't want to rent to a tenant. And I don't believe that the government should be involved in the process at all because there's so many different factors involved. So you might have somebody who, you know, they they have an eviction that's over five years old and you're like, oh, well, landlord shouldn't be able to look at that. But the reason that they haven't had any more recent evictions is because they were in prison for the last five years. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, right, I'm just using this this very outrageous example because I want you to understand that hey, landlords, we need the ability to see what the history of our tenants is, and you know, saying that hey, at any point in your past, you were not good with money, you were not good at making uh, good on the debts that you owed. Well, that might be enough to, to, especially for a small mom and pop landlord who only has one property and doesn't want to take the risk with a bad tenant. That might be enough for that person to say, hi, I need to reject you. I need to reject you. Otherwise, I am putting myself at risk and I don't have the emergency reserves to cover it if you decide to stop paying rent and then trash my property. So, you know, th- this is a you know situation that I'm seeing repeated in different parts of the country, you know, obviously Wisconsin's in the Midwest. So, you know, it's, it's being spread throughout the Midwest. And, you know, we've seen it in places like California and New York, where these same types of proposals are being made. So look for it wherever you're living and investing as well. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you believe that by them banning you know, evictions that are over five years old, that will actually help people with evictions on their records get housing. That's that's the important question, right? Like every time I see these sort of proposals being thrown out there, do they actually work? And that's the real question. Or do they put a whole bunch of demands onto landlords that cost them a whole bunch of money and then make it more difficult for them to operate their businesses? And Not to mention there's going to be landlords who do not want to participate regardless of what the law says. And they're going to find ways around the law so they can reject those tenants. Okay, so, you know, when it comes down to this sort of thing, I don't think that suddenly we're going to see a whole bunch of people who have evictions on their records who are suddenly having a super easy time finding housing. No, I believe that what we're going to see is negligible benefits, if any at all. There might be one or two cases where hey, you know, we have a good tenant who made a mistake when they were younger, five plus years ago, right? And have changed and now things are great. But there's going to be a lot of bad tenants who slip through the cracks. And that's what the real problem is. So in order to get to that one good tenant, right, we have to deal with 99 bad ones. <laughs> that, that's not what we want to see. That, that makes a law hurtful to the landlords and, you know, it, it, it's a complete ridiculous mess. But anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. This article is coming from WQOW.com. And it says, 
Wisconsin bill could prohibit eviction discrimination. Eviction discrimination, you know, sounds really bad. But, you know, there are some forms of discrimination and discriminating that, that are okay, right? And discriminating against people with evictions on their record, I don't have any sort of problem with it. So let's see what the article says. A newly introduced bill in the Wisconsin legislature could amend what, uh, what counts for discrimination when applying for housing. State Senator Jeff Smith, a Democrat from Euclid, has sponsored Assembly Bill 714, which could bar questioning about or denying housing due to evictions that took place over five years ago. Additionally, property owners, agents, or landlords must inform prospective tenants that they as renters are not obligated to disclose any evictions that occurred more than five years ago. So yeah, it, now it's, it's up to everyone to say, hey, you don't, you don't have to tell us about your eviction history if you don't want to, right? Believe me, there aren't many tenants out there who are just jumping at, oh yeah, here's all my evictions. No, that, that's kind of a fantasy world that they're talking about right there, okay? There aren't very many tenants who are going to come forth and uh, let you know about their evictions before they rent your place. I've had it happen before where they have, right? And I instantly rejected them because they told me that, but at least they were honest. But most of the time I find evictions when I'm doing my tenant screening, you know, after the person has filled out the application, okay? Then I, I run their background and like, oh, there's an eviction right there. That's the only way you know, because they, they don't want to willingly tell you that because they know that you're going to reject them if, they, if we see it, right? Well, you know, maybe, I don't know if they're hoping that maybe I won't check, I mean, yeah, there are landlords who don't check eviction histories. There are landlords who don't do credit and background checks and don't call employers and verify income. So, you know, maybe they'll get lucky. But how most landlords, they, they have some sort of procedures in place to make sure that they don't get completely screwed over by bad tenants. So, yeah, we, we need to be able to check the eviction histories. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's over five years old. You know, I, I think that, like I said, there's plenty of landlords out there who are willing to take the risk on people with evictions on their record. OK, there's plenty of them, mostly smaller mom and pop landlords. The bigger corporate players are the ones who don't want to, you know, they have the blanket bans. Right. But, you know, a lot of us smaller landlords, such as myself, we have a blanket ban, too. So, you know, it's it, it really kind of makes it difficult for these people. But. What, what that should say is, right, rather than saying that, hey, we're going to allow these people to misbehave, you know, basically not pay the rent and then be, be evicted, right, and then face no consequences going off into the future, well, maybe we need to tell people, hey, there are consequences for your actions. When you don't pay your rent and when you get evicted, that makes it harder for you rent, to rent another place. So even when it comes to credit score, right, it takes seven years before, you know, negative credit stuff falls off of your credit history. That's because the banks, they can't trust you. The banks can't trust you. They don't want to lend you money because you have proven that you're not going to pay. Well, landlords, we deserve the same sort of ability to treat customers the way a bank does. Because we're talking about uh, most of my houses are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm going to put you in here. And basically, you stay in my place, my hundred, you know, my multiple hundred thousand dollars. If I have a place that's worth three hundred thousand dollars, you're staying in a three hundred thousand dollar house. You're supposed to be paying me twenty five hundred dollars a month. And that's a huge, huge risk of my money, my investment that I could lose. So, I, you know, yeah, I'm doing full checks on you to make sure that you are at least credit worthy as of right now. That doesn't mean that you're going to pay me, but that gives me much better odds that that's going to happen. When circumstances in their life have put them in a place where they have a record that shows they did not pay their rent or they were evicted five years ago or six or seven or eight, ten years ago, Smith said, that should not be held against them under their current circumstances. Senator Smith said he hopes the bill will help fight what he considers a housing crisis in Wisconsin. Like previous bills he sponsored this session, Smith said he hopes that Republican colleagues will allow the bill to at least move to a public hearing. Yeah, and he thinks it's going to actually help fight you know, this, this housing crisis, right? These things, these sort of rules don't help anything. What we need is more housing. 
And, you know, like my my thought was, hey, why is it that the types of affordable housing out there that people want, that people need, aren't being built? And what I'm talking about specifically are, um, you know, trailer parks. OK, we need a lot more trailer parks, governments, local jurisdictions. They are not zoning areas for them. They don't want them. They, they consider them to be a blight, but they are actually a very low cost way to get people into housing. OK, and uh, my personal opinion is they should be encouraging more development in that sort of housing. Instead, they they push, oh, we want lots of new single family homes that cost 350 grand. Well, you know, lots of single family homes that cost 350 grand. A lot of people can't afford, but they can afford a trailer over here in the trailer park. OK, and, uh, you know, that that's why, you know, I I sit here and I'm like, hey, when you have these huge you know, zoning demands that make it impossible to build the, the lower income types of housing that people need, well, yeah, you're always going to have a group of lower income people who can't afford to live anywhere. That, that's the truth. That's the absolute truth. If you look back at like the 1920s and you know, early 19th, you know, 1900s, right? They built just absolutely small homes. You, you would go into a home. I, I own a home that was pretty small when it was built. It was a uh, one bedroom, one bath. And eventually they expanded it. You know, they were able to expand it. You know, that's something that people used to do back in the day was they would put additions onto their homes as they, you know, uh, time passed and as their families grew larger and larger. So they would add a bedroom here. They'd add a bedroom there. On the other side of the house, they might add a second floor to the home, you know, but you you don't look at regular suburban areas now and see that, hey, people are adding on to homes anymore. They can't because the local government has made that illegal. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's dumb. It's dumb. And so, you know, like in my opinion, part of the reason why housing is so expensive is because they don't have... They, you know, they, they just don't allow the same types of housing to be built that they did before. Oh, the housing has to be, the yards have to be so big, there has to be so much set back from the street. Well, you know, when you put in those rules, right, that means that the lot size has to be bigger. And then all of a sudden that makes the house much, much more expensive. But anyway, I'm, I'm off on a, a rant right now. I just thought it was quite interesting that they sit here and, you know, they, they try to take away landlord's tools. Basically, we are blamed for there being a lack of affordable housing when the truth of the matter is that government rules and regulations are basically the real driver behind why there's a lack of development, why there's a lack of affordable housing, why landlords have to charge so much.